Okay. So we're here with Kyle from Tulip. So Kyle, I am just your regular run of the mill operator. Let's walk me through this, show me what we do, so let's yeah. show some value here. Yeah, absolutely. So this process here is a collaboration between us, Autodesk, and Formlabs. Um, at Tulip here, we're owning the process, actually walking people through this. Mm -hmm. uh, Autodesk uh, provided Fusion 360, their 3D modeling software, to actually model these mice. Nice. And then these were printed on Formlabs printers, right? Got so it. to start this process of assembling one of these mice, first thing I want to do is scan my badge. So by doing this with uh, OCR, optical character recognition, I'm actually pulling my name off of this tag and then capturing this for later down the line mm -hmm. uh, in analytics to see how many people are running through this. Right? Got it. First, I can start picking my pieces. You'll see uh, I'm actually controlling these lights here. So I've got guided pick to light. Mm -hmm. If I pick a bin piece here, then I can go to the next step automatically with uh, hand detection from our depth camera up top. Got it. Similarly, I'm going to do that over here with my PCBA. I'm going to do that with my optical lens, which is right here. Now the app automatically progressed to my assembly. Mm -hmm. So now it's giving me all of the steps that I need to assemble this thing, right? So, so it's I gotta, showing us on the screen, and then we will see corresponding with the lights here on the bar. Every right? time I got to pick, it's going to light up, light up what I need. And then every time I got to do something, it'll show me what's not. Excellent. Up so here. it's taking the guesswork out of it. Absolutely. Us. Got it. And while I'm assembling this, it's worth noting that the lights that I'm lighting up here are fully configurable in Tulip. So the fact that I'm lighting up these lights is unique to this assembly. If I have a different assembly with a different set of uh, materials, I can be lighting those up as well based on whatever work order I'm picking or job. Excellent. Uh, so we can change that per station based on work order, based on product code, that is whatever right. that is. If for. what bins you need to pick from is something that is knowable, then it is something you can drive these bins with. Fantastic. So now to go next, it's saying press my foot pedal, do so here. I have another step where I got to put in my battery contacts here. I do that as well. And then I wait, it says press again, press. Now I can pick which color I want to do here. Now what happens if we push the foot pedal but we haven't, you know, we haven't finished what the step right. on the actual unit? A couple of different things, right? So depending on the step you're on, we're going to get different reactions. On a picking step like this, if I press it, nothing's going to happen and it'll actually give me an error. Okay. On other steps, I can say press this foot pedal to go forward or go backward or send a message to a user, right? Mm -hmm. This is just another input upon which we can run any number of triggers of logic and notification. Got it. So here I want to pick a different material. So I want to pick a gray piece today, right? And it's giving us the option here on the light bar that I can pick from any three. Right? That's right. And if I want to change my mind, right, I can pick from a different one and we'll see that this is changing as well. Excellent. So now that I pick this, we can see I have my live station inventory here too. So if I want to set up an alerting system, say if this is under a certain restock value, then send a text, an email, send a notification on a web service like Slack or Teams, I can do that as well. Excellent. Now that I've picked this, I press the foot pedal, go forward, and I want to know what texture is on this because with Autodesk uh, Fusion 360, we've put a couple different textures on this material. Mm -hmm. For this one, again, I scan, and based on a model that we've trained, uh, we actually can categorize what this pattern is. Here, we can see it's a zebra stripe pattern. Got so it. my operator doesn't need to know the different patterns that are compliant with my process because as long as the model is trained, it's capturing all the data in the format that I need it. Fantastic. Now if I forward, I can do one final assembly. And my last step is to insert a battery and then click this button to make sure that my mouse works. Uh, get a battery. Get a dongle. Plug this in here. Once I turn this on, we should be able. And then we should see it on the screen. This right. So my mouse now works because I'm able to use it. And now you're going to use this mouse to validate your process. Exactly. Excellent. I'm already validated by function of clicking that next button. Excellent. So we finished this. We can see some of the production sti uh, status mm -hmm. uh, statistics that I have here. On the dashboard over on my right, we have more uh, process statistics as well. If I press next here, this is going to go back, fetch new inventory levels, be ready for the new user. Fantastic. That's awesome. That is awesome. So really, it's taking all the guesswork out of you know, these processes where I'm having to pull potentially multiple SKUs 
to create different products are the same products, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's just total ease of use for our operator. Yep. On top of all that, I did not write a single line of code to do all this. I made this in about a week. Wow. Wow. Excellent. Ex fantastic. Absolutely. Thanks Thank for coming you by. so much. Hey, Vaughn. So tell me what you learned. So oh. you've gone through the, you've gone through the demo here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Walk me through what you learned. Listen, fantastic. So Tulip and Autodesk have taken all the guesswork out of it for the operator, right? Okay. So we're going through the process. The light bar is telling us exactly which pieces to pick, exactly which step in the process. And we're just using our foot pedal here at the bottom to move along the process. If we make a mistake, the light bar will notify us, the screen notifies us. So once we get to the next step, we step on the pedal. Mm -hmm. And so this, is a, this says, I'm present. Okay. Yep. And and how long? So Tulip is the front end. How long did it take to? What was the full development of this line in, in say in Manager? So it took uh, about a week of me doing this alone. All right. So one week, one man week. Which uh, worth noting, this process app is just one app played on four stations. So extending this is trivial. Making the one app is the main body work. All right. So what you did was you built a single Tulip app right. as the as the top end interface for input output. That's correct. Right. And it's just, you're creating multiple instances. So as we add stations down, you just deploy the app on the next station. That's correct. And I made a second app, that's the dashboard behind you. That was made in the exact same app editor where I made these processes. In one, one man week. That's correct. Mm -hmm. wow. And what was, the, what was the goal? So when you guys, when the use case comes up and you're, you're the proposition, the value proposition, what was ultimately the, the two or three gains you were trying to achieve. Right, so the people walking through this process are majoritively untrained in this process, right? So the goal here is getting people to do a simple assembly of these different parts with a couple different steps involved, mm -hmm. but without having any kind of uh, presupposed knowledge or pre-training in the process. They're gonna be able to get in and out of here in a cycle time of about three to five minutes. That is already being tracked by Tulip, uh, and that's without ever seeing this mouse before in their life. All right, wow. All right, so in summary, so a couple of things I wanted to say about all the, the content that we've shot this week is wholly unsponsored. The only thing that Tulip has paid us for is they're gonna reimburse us for our travel expenses. That's it. Right. I'm not paid to give this, this, the, this feedback. Vaughn is not paid to give this feedback. There is no commercial relationship between Tulip and us. This is our impartial opinion. My impartial opinion about Tulip is over the last four years, the platform has come a very, very long way. Here is the, the, the money quote, the thing that really stands out to me is two things. Number one, this is just an, yet another example of how the culture, the philosophy, the strategy of Tulip as an organization is operator focused. Absolutely. Making things as easy for the operator as humanly possible. But a byproduct of that was, and I, I don't know if it was by design or if it was by accident, it, the time to value, I, it, is, it is impossible to convey just how short the time to value is mm -hmm. in some, in what really amounts to actually very complex integrations in other platforms. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that is ultimately the fundamental game-changing element of Tulip. It starts Absolutely. with the culture, obviously, mm -hmm. focused on operators, but the byproduct has been short time to value. And again, one man week here, I mean, think about it. Imagine you're a, a manufacturer, an end user, mm -hmm. you've got this operation in Taiwan, right. okay, and you're hiring a systems integrator in the United States to go do this in some other platform in Taiwan. It is not, I, I assure you, they are not quoting you one man week of time <laughs> right. to, to do this, this integration. Yeah. That is not what this is. Yeah. This is 160 hours minimum if you're, if, you're, if you're looking at an integrator who is trying to give you the real number, and most people are probably quoting somewhere north of 480 to 540 hours of integration time to do this, mm -hmm. and you had 40 hour, one man week, four cells, real, one follow-up. To deploy a new cell, how yeah. long? How long, now that you've got the app is fully developed, and you're gonna, how long? If I have a computer that is not turned on, 30 minutes. So 30 minutes for the next cell. I mean, at the end of the day, if you wanna know why I'm excited about Tulip, it's that. It's operations focused, short time to value. All right. Furthermore, I'll tell you this. For an operator, uh, my training time is cut down. I mean, by leaps and bounds, right? Also, this is empowering me to look for opportunities that I can create, at a, you know, if I see an app that I want to create, 
it's given me that opportunity. It's also given me the ability to track, and then also they have this great thing that's sending these metrics, you know, to my phone, to my tablet, where I can see that in real time. If I need more product, boom, it's notifying me. It's fantastic, love it. So, so Vaughn, what you guys don't know about Vaughn's background in manufacturing is Vaughn was a supervisor in a very manual manufacturing process where they were manufacturing small homes. Mm -hmm. So they were stations at scale like this. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you this question. So the, one of the biggest challenges, you said that you were telling me, you'd call me on the phone complaining, mm -hmm. oh my God, we're in the stone ages, what the hell are we gonna do here? Yes. And one of the biggest issues is we didn't know where we are, you said, right. but more importantly, the operate, I, my, my crew, training my crew to do things right. Yeah in the right steps to ensure quality, which was the big thing. Right. He was saying our biggest problem is all the time we spend in quality assurance after the small home, Correct. the tiny home is built. Right. Does something like this, in your opinion, how does this I change the game? I think this would cut down on rework uh, drastically. I think that, again, like I said, the training time, you know, that way that myself as a supervisor, I'm not having to go to station to station to station. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. It empowers your plant floor workers like nothing that I've seen. And so pricing wise, so everybody always wants to know how much would this have cost? So we've got four edge devices. Yep. And so then what we have is a station license at each station. So yep. you would license each station and four edge devices. That's, that's your all in cost. That's the whole right? thing. Yeah. Wow. I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to know why I'm so giddy, there's your answer. This is you it. talk about extending those stations, right? If your production is over in Taiwan, I'll remind you, I made most of this at, at home, right. at my desk, right? right? So if I need to deploy this here or over in you know, Budapest, I can do so with the same amount of clicks. Awesome. And Kyle, how, how hard would it be if, if myself as a supervisor or an operator sees something that we need to change how hard would it be for us to change that in this process? Oh, simple. I'll tell you, the text on the top of that screen wasn't pulled about 20 minutes ago. Wow. So, Fantastic. Right. Kyle, I appreciate it so Thanks much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you again. All right.